Hey there, this is Kevin Johnson, the community manager for StarCraft II at Blizzard Entertainment. Back with you again to walk through more features coming soon in Heart of the Swarm. If you happen to miss last week's video covering social features, you'll definitely want to check it out. We'll provide a link to that video at the conclusion of this one. In this week's video, we'd like to spend some time covering features designed to make StarCraft II a bit more approachable for players coming into the game for the first time, while also offering a few improvements to the multiplayer experience veteran players have come to know and love. Let's take a look. The path for growth as a StarCraft II player begins in the matchmaking menu. We have organized this interface to be as approachable as possible for new players, presenting a framework for skill growth as you move through the menu from left to right. The first stop for a new player will be our freshly added training mode. In training, you will be able to hone the basic skills involved in amassing an army for each of the three races in the game. As you play against an AI opponent, the game will offer small, reachable goals for the player to strive for and practice. Focus on achieving each of these goals and you should be successful in defeating your enemy. You will be able to choose from one of three stages in this mode that will govern the options available to you while building your army. Stage 1 pairs everything back to focus on basic ground units and runs at the normal game speed. Build your base, generate a healthy economy, and defeat your enemy. Stage 2 will add more advanced ground units and up the game speed to fast. You will dive even deeper into the system surrounding production and upgrading your new ground units. In Stage 3, the game will unlock all of the available multiplayer units for your race, including air, and will play at the faster game speed. Once you have mastered the practice options available in training mode, you now possess the basic knowledge required to defeat an opponent in StarCraft II. As the next step in your skill progression, you should consider moving on to our newly added versus AI mode to test and hone your ability. The options in this mode are simple. Choose to play solo against the AI or with friends in 2v2 or 3v3 matchups. What also makes this mode unique from general AI matches found in Wings of Liberty is that we designed it to intelligently pair you with difficulty settings that align with your ability. You will no longer need to guess what difficulty you should be playing against. When you first access this mode, you will be asked to play a set of three placement matches. Based on your performance in those matches, the game will pair you with an AI difficulty that is appropriate for you. Continue to play and hone your skills in this mode and you will begin to access the more challenging difficulty settings. There are numerous tiers of difficulty to the game, so there will be plenty of opportunities to take on a larger challenge. Use the versus AI to improve your ability with the game in preparation for competition against other players, or simply enjoy the steady, competitive challenge of playing multiplayer against an equally matched, computer-driven opponent. Once you're ready to dip your toe into competition against fellow human opponents, you can take a look at the next menu option available in matchmaking, Unranked Play. For those of you who played in Wings of Liberty, we received a ton of feedback from players asking for the ability to play competitively without worrying about how their performance would affect their official ladder ranking. Well, we have brought that feature to Heart of the Swarm with Unranked Play. You can benefit from finding great games using our excellent matchmaking system without having to worry about being ranked on a ladder. If you have actually played ranked games prior to accessing Unranked, the game will use your rating in the Ranked Ladder as a starting point for Unranked. However, the two will then begin to adjust separately based on your respective performance in each mode. Now you can finally start practicing with that other race you've always wanted to pick up, or simply enjoy practicing against opponents without the pressure of feeling like you're being graded on your performance. Of course, taking the far right position in the matchmaking menu is your access to Ranked Play. This is the traditional multiplayer experience that players are accustomed to from Wings of Liberty. Playing in ranked mode will allow you to be placed on the official Battle.net ladder and within a league appropriate to your ability. When you feel like you have practiced the game enough that you are ready to see just how good your skills compare with the rest of the world, this is your place. Keep in mind that if you ever wanted to arrange a competitive game with friends or even run a small tournament, you can still find custom games by way of the menu option located on the home screen. Lastly, we also want to talk about our new leveling system. Every time you play a game, be it against the AI in training or versus mode, a custom game, or unranked and ranked ladder matches, you will earn experience points for the race that you are playing with. Each race is capped at 30 levels, and your current cumulative level total across all races is displayed in the bottom left-hand corner of your portrait. That means you will hit the level cap at 90 if you've managed to max out all the experience available for each of the races. 
All along the journey from level 1 to 30, you will earn rewards for your respective race upon completing various levels. These can be anything from the traditional portrait images you may be familiar with from Wings of Liberty, to decals that will display on your buildings in-game. We are even offering new skins for your units and dance animations that you can use to celebrate your victory over opponents. We look forward to hearing what the community thinks about this new experience system and plan to make additions and improvements throughout the future life of StarCraft II. That pretty much covers everything we wanted to discuss regarding accessibility and training improvements coming in Heart of the Swarm. The game launches on March 12th of this year, so mark your calendars. We'll be back with you again next week to take a look at features designed to improve the experience surrounding multiplayer games and esports. Talk to you soon.